welcome to Northeast Community Church. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Let's sing and worship together. Good morning, everybody. 
I hope they're at home as you're singing along there. Maybe you're actually putting that into practice, doing a little dance, little moves there in your house. It's great to be able to worship together. If you're with somebody, turn to them, give them a high five, say, I'm glad to be having church with you. And if you're not with anybody, you can give me a, an air high five right now. That's it. All right, thanks. Hey, God bless you. We're so glad you've joined us today. Happy Mother's Day. What a great day to celebrate. And you're in for a real treat this morning. In just a few minutes, uh, you're gonna hear a powerful message uh, from two of our very own, uh, Sarah Lucenta and Katie McManus are gonna share from their heart on this Mother's Day. So you got that to, uh, to look forward to. Now, a couple things I wanna let you know about that are going on. Uh, as we move into the month of May, we're continuing some of our regular activities, whether it be life group. Uh, this Wednesday, we have our men's prayer by Zoom. So look in your email for that, uh, and you can join us for prayer this Wednesday. Uh, the ladies' life prayer will be happening uh, a little bit later this month, so just stay on track with those different things. And by the way, we really haven't updated you in a few weeks on uh, future plans or what's happening as it relates to us being able to gather together again in some form in person. So I just wanted you to know this morning that the elders and I are tracking on it every week. In fact, since this started, we've been in communication and in prayer together on a weekly basis, if not more than that, just seeking God's direction as we work with the health officials and our civic leaders, our government, and then uh, with what's best for you as a congregation. So all I'd say about that this morning is for you to know that we're praying and thinking about it and are working through a lot of details as to what that may look like in the future. So. Stay tuned, we'll be updating you more as the opportunity uh, comes for us begin to explore more intentionally what it means for us to gather again together in person. I honestly can't wait, I miss seeing you guys. I'm thankful for this technology and that we can worship together like we are this morning, but I can't wait to see some of you again uh, in person in whatever new normal uh, looks like. So. Stay tuned, we'll be updating you more. A couple other things I wanna uh, let you know about, some events, activities, uh, things that you can be involved in, um, and that is our outreach efforts. So we've talked to you and Sean shared with you either via email or here in person sharing announcements, a couple different ways you can be involved. One is the NECC Life Notes. So thank you for that. Those of you who are participating, we're getting those words of encouragement out to the elderly, to people who are in need, uh, to healthcare workers, just thanking them for what they're doing. So continue with the, the NECC Life Notes. And then also you can give to help provide meals. And we've done that once this week. We wanna to continue to be a part of that in some way. Meals for the healthcare and hospital workers, just a way of blessing them and thanking them here at Norwalk Hospital. And then finally, a real encouragement we have is just this week we've begun a, a partnership or to come alongside the mutual aid of Norwalk. And this is just a, a group of uh, concerned Norwalk citizens who've come together to help provide meals and have them delivered to families and individuals who are vulnerable, who are in need, and simply can't get out to the stores or may not have the resources to get out to the stores. So most of you know that for years we were a mobile church and we had a storage area where we had to store all of our equipment. We've kind of held on to that storage area and we've been able to be able to allow the mutual aid of Norwalk to come in and use our storage space for them to collect and gather food and then distribute to the d delivery runners on a weekly basis. So I'm really excited about this partnership that we can come alongside some individuals who are doing some great work helping with a real need and it continues to grow and expand. So you'll be hearing more from us, more from me, more from Sean on how you can get involved with that both in donating and bringing uh, food for those that are in need. And then also if you might wanna volunteer in helping to sort or deliver or some of those other things, there's great needs for all of it. So stay tuned this week. You'll be hearing more about practical ways you can get involved. You know what, each one of us does a little bit it will make a big difference. And then finally, again, if you wanna support any of these areas, you can now text to give. So there's different ways you can give. You can drop it off, you can mail it in, you can do it through the website, but the easiest way, if you have a mobile device, is to text to give. So you text to this number, 84321, the amount you wanna give, and then if you want it to go to something specifically, you can say that. So for example, you could say outreach and then your donation would go to outreach. If you wanted to say to the Holy Spirit Fund, then it would go to the, our Benevolence Fund. Uh, and again, of course, I remind you, we appreciate your faithfulness and your regular tithes and offerings as well. And you can just put that in there and give that way as well, which enables us to continue to be the church that God has called us to be. I know that's a lot, 
Love you guys. We're gonna hear some great things a little bit later, but right now, Celeste is gonna update us on what's going on with our kids. Good morning. This is a great day. I'm so excited. Uh, kids, if you're in the room with mom right now, I want you to go over, just give mom a great big hug. Tell her you love her. This is, uh, this is such a great day for us to just take a minute and realize all of these things that moms get to do every week. So, uh, so hey, we've been having a wonderful time in kids' life. Uh, last week on Tuesday, then I counted 13 families that joined us on Zoom. So that was a lot of fun, crazy time. Uh, but we had a, a really great Zoom. Each Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday at four o'clock, we get together and we uh, and we do a little devotional and then we try to have a little bit of fun. The kids are having a great time. If you haven't joined us, log on. I'd love to see you there. Also, if you would take a minute and go check out the email that I sent you this morning. It's got a link to our Bible story video for the day. And uh, so go ahead and hook the kids up on that so that you can enjoy what the, uh, the Mother's Day lesson uh, that, uh, that Sarah's got for you. I uh, hope to see you guys this week. Bye. Let's sing another song together.
through these times, Lord God, we just pray that we know, Lord, that you are in charge. And we put our faith and our trust in you because you are mightier than any coronavirus or any other thing in the world. We thank you for everything you're going to do today. In Jesus' name. Good afternoon, maybe good evening to you, wherever, <laughs> whenever you're tuning in to listen to this. I am so glad that you are. My name is Sarah, and this church in ECC has been my home. And as I was re- preparing for this message, and I was even talking to my virtual life group on Friday night, I realized that this church has been my home for almost all of my entire adult life now. And whenever I say that it has been my home, it's truly been a home for me over a lot of years. And every now and then, you'll see me up here teaching. But today, today Mother's Day, is special for a whole lot of reasons. Mostly that I am not teaching. But along with all of you, I'm going to be taught. (laughs) So I just want to start the time by praying that my heart will be prepared and open and that your heart is open to all the things that you're going to hear today. Father, you are good, and you are kind, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will fall fresh on this place, on my heart, and in the hearts of all those that are listening, that every word we say be glorifying to you and encouraging to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as is so often the case, I have to tell you just a little bit about my own story so that you can see how it is our story and ultimately that it's his story. Many, many years ago at this point, I preached a sermon, and it was a sermon about a great truth that God was teaching me, and it was one about grace and forgiveness, and it was this grace that God offers me freely and extravagantly whenever I want it. And I knew it because it was the way that Jesus also offered grace to Peter on the night that Peter denied him. And I'm sure that somewhere out there in cyberspace you could probably find this message because as we all know, the internet never forgets a thing. But I think that what I need to share today with all of you is that that grace and that lesson that I was learning at that time was learned in a time of deep pain. It was a time and space in my life several years ago where I remember saying to a select few people in my life that I didn't know if I could be a part of a church anymore. Not just a church, not meaning this church, but the church, the big C church that I didn't know if I could do it. Along with some deeply painful things that had happened to people that I love very much, including sickness and death, I had several close relationships in my life that came apart for a lot of different reasons. And as much as I felt close to God, maybe even closer than ever in that time of pain, I wasn't sure what it meant to be a part of God's people in any way that made relational sense. I was really wounded, but maybe more than that, I didn't see a whole lot of hope. And maybe you've been there too. And maybe you're there now and you've stumbled upon this. Don't stop listening. I didn't understand how people, myself included, maybe even myself most of all, could hurt one another so deeply and that the kingdom-building body could move forward. I retreated. And on the Sundays that I managed to come to a church by the grace of God and the gentle help of my wonderful husband, Rob, I sat in the very back row, and I left before the gathering was over, and I didn't dare make eye contact with anybody. My emotions were right here all the time. 
And just as a side note, I don't let a whole lot of Sundays go by now where I don't also look in the very back row to see who might be sitting there. I didn't know how to move forward, and the pain was all-consuming. And most of all, that deep cynicism that was in my heart, I know now, looking in hindsight, was the work of an enemy that wanted to do everything he could to isolate me. I felt so lonely then. I had God, but I didn't have a whole lot else, and I didn't know how God could make the same promise to me that he makes in Joel that he could restore what the locust had eaten because at that point it felt like the locust had eaten almost everything or that it was possible that he could redeem what had been lost. And that process of fully receiving his grace Better understanding his grace so that it could flow out of me is another teaching for another time. But it does lead me to a few years later, the spring of 2017. I had slowly and with great trepidation started to pray that God would heal, continue to heal some of the hurt. And he was faithful, so faithful to heal it. But still... If I'm honest, and I made a promise to myself that when I'm up here, I always would be, I still wasn't sure how he was going to do it fully. I heard God say over and over again to my heart, Sarah, pray without ceasing. Study my word. Take a chance and step back in. And we had a friend, Pam, who's still a great friend today, and she had ran a couple of women's Bible studies the past couple of years here at Northeast Community Church. And that summer, after leading for two summers prior, for different reasons, she wasn't going to be able to lead a women's Bible study that summer. And so it probably or possibly wasn't going to happen at Northeast. And in June of that year, many years ago, I was praying again about my fear and my weariness of stepping back into the church wholeheartedly. There was a fear of not knowing if I would belong, but I think more than that, there was a sorrow of feeling like that first love, that salvation love and feeling was so far off, and it had been scarred by so much life. And in the midst of all of that, God told me, Maybe you should lead that women's Bible study, Sarah. And I, of course, thought that he was talking to somebody else in my head named Sarah, so I ignored it, (laughs) as I often do. And not even one week later, a friend mentioned that there was a young woman in the church that I knew, though not very well, that had been a part of the summer Bible studies that they had mattered to her in some really significant way, and that she wanted to see this Bible study happen this summer of 2017. And I thought, well, there is my confirmation, isn't it? I guess God was speaking to me after all. So I got the woman's number. I texted her to see if she would like to meet. And a few days later, we met for an early dinner at a little restaurant in South Norwalk where we were the only ones there. And when she walked in, there was this bright-eyed, fresh-faced woman who was so hopeful for the future of the church. She was so insistent just in her life in its ability to reach somebody in the middle of anything and provide a home. That she saw how the church could allow the body of Christ, this church, to somehow be a father to the fatherless, or maybe more appropriately on this day, a mother to the motherless. And that spark of hope, that conversation that we had that day, that saying yes for me, and probably for her, was a start. For me, it was the start of me seeing through other people that God could indeed restore what the locust had eaten. And 
believe it or not, he was going to do it in the exact same way that I thought it had been taken away through one another. And so we led the study together that summer, leading, praying, teaching, being together. And I'm so thankful today to say that she is a great, a great and wonderful friend, that she is a real sister in the faith, and that woman is here today to talk about her own story, which I'm so glad, because in many small ways and large ways is a part of my story, but which is ultimately always his story. And that hopeful woman that sat across from me that day, across from me, a cynical woman, is my friend, Katie McManus. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. That was really kind. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy Mother's Day. Uh, if I haven't gotten a chance to meet you, my name is Katie. Um, and I've been coming to NECC for about seven years, um, and I really look forward to the moment when we're all back here together. Mother's Day, uh, there is a lot to unpack to really share what this day means to me. Uh, typically, it's very hard, and it's a day I usually avoid. Uh, but this year, I'm facing my fears. Uh, so before I jump in, I know that I have to pray and ask God for strength, grace, and I just feel his overwhelming presence around me. Um, I also sometimes have to do public speaking for work, so I'll usually pray that I talk slowly, work on my stage presence, and just make sure that I'm doing this right. Oh God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for all the moms out there, and especially mine. Lord, give me the strength to do this uh, and share my story. I pray for all those who are listening. Let them connect to this however it's meant to be. Oh, Lord, uh, I pray for those who are celebrating their moms today. May they surround them with love. And I also pray for those where this day is hard. And I just pray for peace and comfort. Lord, we love you. Thank you. Amen. So today, I am celebrating the 10th Mother's Day since I lost my mom. Over these past 10 years, I've experienced a variety of emotions on this day. Uh, the first one, I remember just being sad and jealous. Um, I was really just jealous of friends who could really celebrate their mom. I then went through a phase of just staying busy, and luckily my work schedule helped with that, um, so I just kept busy and avoided any pain or grief that came with it. And only one time did I actually come to church and sit in, uh, sit right here, and I cried the entire time. So we have an ongoing saying in my family, you just don't attend church on Mother's Day. It's just too hard. So to say that being on this stage right now is a big deal for me, it's true. Um, but it's actually been on my heart for well over a year. I knew I was coming to a place where I had to flip the switch. I had to find peace on this day. I have so much to celebrate when thinking about my mom. I don't want to avoid today. So about a year ago, on March 20th, 2019, I wrote in my prayer journal, Lord, as I look at my grieving process, I know that Mother's Day is the most challenging day of the year. It's just painful and sad. And maybe you have time to reflect on happy memories, but it's challenging. I have on my heart that I'm prepared to share my story at some point on Mother's Day. So Lord, I pray for wisdom and guidance and let my mom's faith run through me. So let me start by telling you a little bit more about my mom, Robin. She was truly the kindest woman. She was loving, she was patient. She was quick to bring over a casserole or a chocolate chip pound cake if you were sick or down. Um, if you sent her a Christmas card, she would keep it forever. She was really an incredible mom. But I know like other moms, she also had doubts in herself. Was she doing this right? Was she properly teaching her kids? Was she being a good mom? My mom was a faith-filled woman. She was the spiritual leader of our household and brought my dad, my brother, my sister all to Christ. She introduced me to Jesus. She brought me to church. She encouraged me to read the Bible. She hoped to build a foundation within me. 
And while I'd love to say the story continues that I spent my time with my mom, loving going to church, doing Bible studies with her, learning from her, that just didn't happen. The key word is she introduced me to Jesus. And he was always part of my life, but I never made him the focus. And honestly, if I look back on my life, a lot of what kept me going to church was actually around food. In elementary school, my church had Krispy Kreme donuts waiting for you when you arrived. And if you haven't had the pleasure of experiencing the hot light, trust, it got me to church every Sunday. But then when I was a teenager, you know, waking up for church just seemed impossible. Um, I should mention my church started at 11.30 a.m. So my parents instilled a rule that if you don't go to church, then you don't go out to lunch. They refused to bring me takeout. So every Sunday, there I was, back at church. My point here is my mom didn't give up just because I gave her that typical teenager attitude. She knew that Jesus needed to be part of my life, and she was going to help me get there. She kept plugging away and pointing me in the right direction, just like I know a lot of moms listening do for their kids. So fast forward to the fall of 2010. Uh, We learned that my mom had stage 4 lung cancer. We knew pretty quickly it would take a miracle. It was just too advanced. So in just three short months, we went from a diagnosis to approaching the end. It was so quick, it was hard to comprehend what was even happening in our lives. How could we survive without her? Could we honestly do this life without her? And even in a time when our focus was completely on caring for her, she was worried about us. She was concerned that her sickness was putting our lives on hold. She wanted me to go back to college. She wanted my brother and sister to go back home and continue living their lives. I saw my mom put my needs above hers even as she was battling cancer. Moms are really incredible. They continuously show examples of selflessness. And I saw that in the most purest way towards the end of my mom's life. Right before she left for hospice, my mom said a statement that fundamentally changed my life. She held my hand and said, I'm sad to leave you all, but my soul is ready. And I just thought, wow, her faith is so solid. I saw someone preparing for eternal life with just open arms. And I thought, how do I get to that point? And I'm still saying that. She showed confidence because she had loved Jesus her entire life and was now going to meet him. She exemplified having faith. And the night before she passed, I posted this verse on my Facebook, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That foundation of faith that my mom tried her whole life to build in me was starting, even just in that small moment of being proud to share a Bible verse on Facebook. And as we got to the final moments, we went from sadness to celebration. We started looking at photos, sharing memories, and singing songs. The moment she passed, we were singing Mighty to Save. This song has come to be a part of me. It plays in the craziest of times, and when I desperately need to hear these lyrics, it comes on. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe in, now I surrender. And I believe in that moment on this verse, my mom surrendered, and she went home. Just a quick water. But losing your mom at the age of 20 is hard. At times, I feel cheated. I think of the moments that she's not going to be there, and I just get sad. But since her loss, I've experienced God's provision. When I look back at those first years, I think, how did I get through that? Of course, I have wonderful friends and family, but I had this feeling of a greater power holding me up, like I was in water, and I should have been drowning, but I wasn't. I should have been lonely, anxious, fearful, but I wasn't. And I know that wasn't a coincidence. That was God carrying me through this, just like 
he said to me in Isaiah 41.10. So then I moved up to Connecticut, alone, young, and ready for this new experience. And when I got here, I knew it was time for me to choose a church and get to know Jesus for myself. Did a quick Google search, found NECC, I liked the website, and found myself getting into a routine of attending on Sundays. Now, the first couple years, I went right in and right out. I avoided small talk, and the Sundays when Thomas said, pray with your neighbor, I looked for an exit. The reality was, I had been going to church all my life, but now it was my choice, and I just needed time. I'd taken this step, but it was a journey, and God was working with me one step at a time. The summer of 2015 for me was especially busy, uh, traveling most weeks for work or my social life, but I found myself with a five-week gap, which was really rare. Of course, that was exactly when the NECC Women's Bible Study was taking place that summer. I had some internal back and forth and thought, okay, well, I guess I have to do it. This Bible study was a pivot point for me. While the study was great, but what I discovered was a group of women who would guide me, love me, help me walk in my faith more than I could ever imagine. If my mom could have handpicked spiritual mentors, it would have been these ladies. I went from being afraid to tell colleagues that I was going to church to attending life group regularly to looking forward to praying with my neighbors at church. My dad shared on one day, oh, I wish your mom could see this. She'd be so shocked. And at first I was like, okay, shocked is kind of a strong word, dad. But then I looked at it and I was like, you're right, it is. When my sister saw what was happening, she sent me my mom's Bible. For 20 years, my mom wrote notes, highlighted, and starred scripture. I'm fortunate now that when I read scripture, I'm also reading advice from my mom. Both she and God continue to be at work guiding me together. Just last week, I saw a note on this verse, Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. She had circled peace, and she wrote beside it, Believe God is in control. In Galatians, she starred verse 22 in chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Next to this verse, she had a few bullets. Am I committed to my family? Am I training my children in the scripture? Am I glorifying God at work? And in John 15, 12, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. She circled, love each other as I have loved you. Now, I never got to have those biblical conversations with my mom. I never asked her about her faith. What parts did she struggle with? How did she overcome it? And while I would love to have those conversations with her, I saw it. I saw it in the way she loved her family. I saw it in the way she was committed to waking up and reading her Bible at the kitchen table. I saw it in the way she raised me. And I saw it at the end when she was ready for heaven. So moms, whether you see it right now or not, you are building a foundation in your kids that will guide them more than you'll ever know. I'm so thankful that I had a mom who never gave up on me, loved me more than I could ever imagine, and paved the way for me even after she was gone. So celebrate today and enjoy it. And if you're in the group where Mother's Day is, a, is hard and it's a day to avoid, for whatever reason that might be, I just hope my story can be a source of hope. I struggled with this day for 10 years, and the thought of even going to church, much less speaking, seemed impossible. But God's timing is perfect. My biggest fear doing this was speaking about something so hard in front of a live audience. His timing is perfect. Thanks.
Thanks, Katie. <laughs> Thanks so much. If there is something that I know that God reveals over and over and over again, it's that he is a God that redeems. And if that word redemption is a word that doesn't quite make sense or you maybe even can't quite work out what it might mean for you, that's okay. I know that I have seen in my life, in my friend Katie's life, and in the lives of so many, and most importantly, probably, what I read in my Bible over and over and over in the life of Jesus himself, and it is this. What is lost can be found again. And there can truly be beauty in our brokenness because there is beauty in his brokenness. And through it all, I fully believe that it can be well in our soul. And on this Mother's Day, maybe even more than any other day, I want to remind every single one of you to let us mother one another well. My life verse is one that Katie included, and I usually wear it around my neck on an engraved chain, and it comes from John, and it bears repeating. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. These are the things that I know that are true about God. He is a God who nurtures us. He is a God who cares for us in our woundedness. And he is a God who celebrates with us in times where we need to celebrate. And I think more than ever, these are probably some of the times that we are experiencing right now. The final thing that I know to be true about God is that he never, ever, ever takes his love from us. And in receiving that love, it is probably our turn to do just the same for one another. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you in ways that my words can't possibly fulfill. To thank you for your goodness and your kindness and the ways that you redeem things for your glory. And the way that you continue to redeem those things over and over and over again as much as we need. And so I pray today, especially, God, that we would recognize and we would receive that you are a God of hope and peace and eternal life. I pray for every single person out there that is watching, but I especially pray for the mothers today and those that mother other people and have been mothered well by other people, God. I pray that your peace would cover our hearts and help us move forward in faith and hope. In Jesus' name, amen.
What a powerful word this morning. So thankful for all the dynamic women who make up Northeast Community Church. Thankful for Sarah who serves not only as a speaker for us and our things, but serves as a shepherd, as an elder, one of our elders for our, converse, our congregation. Just appreciate the authenticity with which Katie shared. I hope you were encouraged and inspired. I know I was. Thankful for my own mother on this Mother's Day. So mom, if you happen to watch this, happy Mother's Day. Thankful for this lady here who's the uh, mother of our children. Happy Mother's Day, babe. Love you. Hey, I hope this week that you'll jump into a life group. I know sometimes with schedules and maybe you're even getting Zoomed out or whatever, but be intentional. It's good for your soul. And sometimes you're the person that needs to show up in the life group to be a blessing to somebody else. So this week, I hope you'll really make it a priority to jump in a life group. We'll be together. God bless you guys. Take this word that you've heard today. Let God do something in your heart. Happy Mother's Day. And we'll see you again in a few days.